Good morning. Welcome to Heart of Worship Service. We're so glad to be here with you worshiping today. Psalm 62, starting with verse 1, says, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Will you please stand if you're physically able? The words will be on the screen. Let us worship.
would read his bulletin, he would note there's only one song to start today. <laughs> you all are wonderful. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm glad to be here to join you all. I'd uh, love to see if you'd look around and see if there is somebody ne seated near you that you haven't greeted. Let's introduce ourselves to one another in Christ's love. Okay, we'll act like I just walked in. It is so glad to add my greeting to the greeting you already received today. We welcome those of you joining us virtually and also in-house. It's great to have you here. Uh, we do have the ritual of friendship in the pad in or in the pew in-house, and if you wouldn't mind filling that out, we would love to know that you were with us today. You saw some slides as you were coming in. Let me just tell you about some of the activities in the life of the church. Yesterday, our friends and partners from Christ Community Church worked the soup kitchen. Uh, baked ziti was on the menu yesterday and some special green beans and, of course, the breads and desserts we get from Publix. And because of their work, the 66 hungry folks did not go to bed hungry last night in Winter Haven, so it was wonderful. We are signed up all the way through November except for Thanksgiving weekend. We do have some helpers there. We could use a head cook on that one. So if you're going to be in town and would like to really do something significant for the community, we'd love to have folks work on that one with us. And then the December dates are open right now, but it's not, it's not anywhere near December, so we're not at all concerned about that. But just think about helping us in Soup Kitchen down the line. Trunk or treat is tonight. Starts at 4.30 out here in the parking lot. Those of us with trunks, I think, have been told to be here at 4 and ready to greet folks at 4.15. And we will have folks out there to greet you as you drive in at 4 o'clock to show you exactly where we need your car located. Going to have a great time. We have almost 20 trunks volunteered, and I think we're just going to have a great time for the children in our church and the children in the community. Um, if you brought candy, hopefully you found the collection bucket and the narthex are downstairs because we're probably going to need a lot of candy tonight, but thank you so much for that. This week, the men will meet on Tuesday. As always, the youth groups meet tonight for trunk or treat. They're doing two trunks as the youth group. And then Wednesday night for middle schoolers, Christ Kids will be here on Wednesday. Just lots of things happening in the life of the church. Great to have you as a part of this. Praise band, thank you for starting us, and we're going to continue in praise. You would cross 
Thank you, praise band. Beautiful. I'd like to invite the children who are present to join me down front now for our time with younger disciples. Everybody made it safely down front. Good. Good to see you today. Uh, my wife is a fourth grade teacher, and her classroom has a library in it. And we were down at her school yesterday doing some things, and I borrowed some books from her classroom. These are AR books. Anybody know what AR is? What is it? Well, it's accelerated reader, and you get points, AR points. It's a test that you take on books. It is a test that you take on books. This one is quiz number 128013, it says. And this one is quiz number 127252. So you're right. You take a test on books. Well, I grabbed these books because I thought they were kind of neat. There's a picture and words on there. Does anybody know who that is? Jesus. Well, we're going to get to Jesus in a little bit. That's right. This is George Washington. Good. And the second book? Abraham Lincoln. Have you ever heard of them before? Who, who was George Washington? The first president of our country. Yeah, and Abraham Lincoln was a president. So, if you are into reading, and I hope you are, these are neat books that tell you the story, the history of our country, and the story of two of our presidents. I was looking through this one today because I actually grew up, when I was your age, I lived in a place called Illinois, and Illinois is called the Land of Lincoln. And so, anytime I come across a Lincoln book, I like to see if there's more that I can learn about that president and that man. Now, several summers ago, I read this book to the kids in Good News for God's Children. And it's called John, Paul, George, and Ben. Now, one of those names, George, who do you think it's about? Well, George Washington. How about John? Who do you think John might be in the story? Yes, ma'am? Well, it could be the John from Jesus' time, although these guys are from, well, John Witherspoon, or John Witherspoon, no. He signed the Declaration of Independence, and he was a Presbyterian minister, so he's always in my brain. John Hancock. And John Hancock supposedly wrote his name real big so that King George would see his name right there on the Declaration of Independence. In this storybook, he wrote his name real big on the chalkboard, too, and didn't leave room for the other kids. So we've got George Washington and John Hancock. Hmm, who would Paul be? <gasps> exactly right. This book has Paul Revere, and what did he do? 
he rode around and warned everybody that the redcoats were coming. And the last one would be Ben. Ben, oh, you guys are right. Do you, you remember that from all those years ago when I read you the book? No, you knew that from history. And this one talks about all the neat things that Ben used to say. Like, three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. <laughs> Interesting statements, huh? And then it goes on and tells us about a kid named Tom. Not even on the book, is it? John, Paul, Ben, and George and Ben? Tom, Thomas Jefferson. So this is a history book. And then, I haven't read this one yet to you, but one summer I'll give you R.A. Blinken. And R.A. Blinken is set to a song. The tune was The Old Gray Mare, and it was called Old A. Blinken Came Out of the Wilderness. And they said it was a campaign song. When he was campaigning for president, they sang the song. And it tells you all about young A. Blinken. I like to know about that. And it talked about all of his exploits as he became president. What's that? I'm going to wait till summer because I've got to practice the song, okay? But we'll get back to you on that. All those books are history books. And you all knew a lot of the stories already. You knew that it would probably be Ben Franklin because you've listened in school or you've listened as your parents and grandparents have taught you about that. All of these tell stories that are our story together as citizens of our country. Now, Flo over there kept saying Jesus because she knows the story in here is supposed to be about Jesus. And if you look up front, it is. So today I'm going to tell you a story and it's going to start with the people of God way back in the time of some judges. So you listen if you're staying in or if you're going on to Sunday school, you ask your parents or grandparents to tell you the story when you go home. So today we're going to read from Judges, and it's a history book. It tells stories of people that were good followers of God. And then we're also going to get to a book in the New Testament called The Acts of the Apostles. It tells about what these people, the apostles, did. And those are the ones who showed us how to live our lives even now following Jesus. So we're looking at a big chunk today in the Bible called history. And some people don't like history. They think it's boring. But the AR book shows that something we can study. And these books show even children can read history. And I love that you knew a lot of the names before I mentioned them because you've been paying attention. So let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and talk to God in prayer. God, we thank you for putting us in this place and among these people who tell us important stories and teach us about history. We thank you for the history of this nation and how we've come to be together as your people. We thank you, God, for the history of us as the people of God. Stories of people like Joshua. Stories of people like the early disciples. Stories of people who are just like us and following you. Thank you, God, for this time together, for calling us to be your people, for leading us in Christ's name. Now, I know that we've got Sunday school today, and I think Miss Kelly is going to be the lead teacher in that. So if you're wanting to go to Sunday school, just follow her out, or you can go be with your families. So thanks for coming. The new covenant God has made with Israel and with us begins in forgiveness. And though we continually break covenant with God, God remains faithful. We confess our sins to God, trusting that God will forgive us and remember our sins no more. So friends, let us join together in praying our prayer of confession. God of all times and places, we confess that we are often plagued by limited vision and faulty memories. You call for us to move forward in our faith to risk and try life more fully in the kingdom of God, and yet we have difficulty seeing too far beyond today. You stir the desire within us for a fuller life, and yet as we hear your challenge, 
we have trouble remembering the many times you have supported us in the past when we have stepped out in faith. Help us to hear the holy history as our own story and to let the next chapter of your work with God's people be written in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. We lift all these prayers to the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, God's pr God promises to forgive us, to put our sins out of God's own mind and heart. And in this way, God gives us not just a second chance, but a new beginning. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, our first scripture lesson today comes to us in the Old Testament book of Judges. I would invite you to turn in the Bible that you may have brought from home or the Bible you'll find in the pew or direct your attention to the screens today. Be reading in Judges chapter 2 from the New Revised Standard Version and I'll begin the reading with verse 16. Listen now for God's word. Then the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the power of those who plundered them. Yet they did not listen even to their judges, for they lusted after other gods and bowed down to them. They soon turned aside from the way in which their ancestors had walked, who had obeyed the commandments of the Lord. They did not follow their example. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge. And God delivered them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord would be moved to pity by their groaning because of those who persecuted and oppressed, oppressed them. But whenever the judge died, they would relapse and behave worse than their ancestors, following other gods, worshiping them and bowing down to them. They would not drop any of their practices or their stubborn ways. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It has been said that those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. That's part of the rationale over the years behind the fact that history classes have been included in the formal educational process in our nation. And when not so eager students wonder why they have to spend their precious time memorizing dates and names, places and events, Things that are so far in the distant past, they don't seem to connect to the world today. Wise teachers and mentors share the fact that if you don't know the mistakes that were made in the past, you might just make those same mistakes yourself. Because those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. Knowing history can indeed help us avoid some of the pitfalls upon the path in life. And knowing history can also help us to see that we're connected to something that came before us and that actually makes us a part of the story. I suspect that twofold purpose was at work when we got to the books of history in God's word to us. You know, if we're thinking about living by the book, a concept we introduced a couple weeks ago as we gave Bibles to our third graders, the first thing we do is we look at the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The books of Moses, they're called. That's where the law is spelled out. That's where we see how God intends for us to live our lives as God's people. That's the map for the best human life possible. And then once we have those rules firmly established in our mind, we move on in the Bible to a considerable amount of history. If you did look in the Bible that you brought from home or the pew, and if you look at the table of contents of the Old Testament of that Bible, the historical section is pretty massive. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. 
That is a huge chunk of biblical material. And in it, it tells this meandering story of how God related to God's people, Israel, and how God's people, like it or not, were simply people. They were regular human beings. In the story we find they followed God closely for a while, and then they would go off the path and lose their way. They would listen for God to speak, and then they would forget who they were and whose they were. That part of the human story is filled with names that are important for us to know. Joshua, Rahab, Saul, Jonathan, David, Deborah, Gideon, Hannah, Samuel, Ruth, Naomi, Solomon. Each of those names triggers a story in our minds. And when we read the stories of these people, we see some of the mistakes that are commonly made by God's children Today I took a little peek into the book of Judges with you. That book is structured on the theme that clearly reinforces the thought that those who don't pay attention to history may tend to repeat it. Now Judges picks up the story of God's people right after a man named Joshua. If you think back to some of the stories you were taught in Sunday school or shared by family members with you, After 400 years of slavery in the land of Egypt, God raised up a man named Moses to deliver the Hebrew people. And they started a journey there out of bondage and toward the age-old promised land. Moses brought the people of God out of bondage. That's in Exodus. Moses helped them to receive the law, Exodus and Deuteronomy. Moses led them for 40 years through the wilderness and then Moses died. Then God raised up a man named Joshua to lead God's people. Finally, they were ready to cross the Jordan River and they were ready to occupy the promised land. It's an incredible story. It talks about how God's people, these former slaves, were going to take possession of a new land and as they did, God would give them victories. Remember the story of the fortified city, Jericho, and how through God's direction and help, the children of Israel conquered that city? They shouted, they blew their trumpets, and the walls of Jericho tumbled down. Well, before that, before the conquest, as they stood on the brink of their new life in the promised land and wondered where God was planning to lead them, God told our ancestors in faith that they would live in houses that they did not build. They would eat from orchards and vineyards that they did not plant. They would drink from wells and cisterns that they did not dig or hew. That's the history and the heritage that made this band of nomads into God's own people. And we pick up the story, part of the human story, in the biblical book of Judges. Joshua instructed the people on how to live. He told them what the promise was. And then he turned them loose. The Bible says that the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua's life. And all the days of the lives of the elders who had lived alongside Joshua. These were the people who had been eyewitnesses to great works of God for Israel. They were the ones that knew the holy history. And the biblical account says that Joshua and his generation died out. And when the keepers of the corporate memory of the Hebrew people were gone, when their knowledge of history had faded, the people did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And they served other gods. In Joshua chapter 2, we find that God was angry at God's people for serving Baal, the Canaanite nature God, and others. God let the people around them plunder the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel marched out in battle after they had forgotten about God, they were defeated. But the Lord had pity on them, and the Lord raised up a judge for them, and the Lord was with the judge. That's how Judges begins. 
And this book is one story after another of one judge after another. And even though the names change, the storyline is the same. The judge follows God and the people follow the judge and life is good. Then the judge dies and the people forget about God and they turn away from God's laws and life falls apart. Finally, in their misery, as they remember their past and cry out to the Lord their God, God raises up a judge for them and the pendulum is on the upswing again. That story becomes obvious in the book of Judges. There's a pattern that we recognize, we expect, we appreciate. This pattern that emerges in Judges actually becomes the pattern by which we follow the rest of the history of God and God's people. As we read through these historical chunks, we see that those who remember and then try to avoid the pitfalls of self-centeredness and sinfulness the ones that focus on God's law and God's love seem to find fullness in the life that God gives them. While those who ignore holy history get swallowed up by big fish, they grope around in the muck, and they don't soar with the saints. Truly, those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. Probably a message for all of us. Last week we talked about the rules of the game. Rules for relating. The way that we behave with God and other people. Those rules that fill the first five books of the Bible. They're the best roadmap for avoiding the potholes of life. As a church, as the people of God together, in part we exist to focus on the rules and the history We realize that to live by the book means to teach it to our children. To live by the book means reminding our youth and our adults. Reminding all of us that God continues to cultivate a relationship with God's people. That's why we make education a vital part of our ministry together. It's why we have a sermon every Sunday morning. It's why our children go to Sunday school or come out for Christ Kids. It's why our youth group meets for fellowship and for Bible study. It's why the men and the women meet as faithful disciples at luncheons and circles and in Sunday school. You see, holy history can sound an alarm for us. Reading and knowing our story can keep us from repeating terrible mistakes. And knowing our history and our heritage as God's people can remind us that we are a part of a community that truly is God's people. You see, there's a negative side to the adage, those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. There's also an upside to paying attention to our story, as those who do know history get to choose how to participate in the finest parts. The Bible is filled in the Old Testament with historical books. When I mention Samuel and Kings and Chronicles, you remember from reading last year in the Bible, those are not short stories. Those are long sagas. When we turn to the New Testament, we have a lot in the Gospels and a lot in the letters. But there is one book of history tucked in there too. It's called the Acts of the Apostles. I've also heard it described as the church in the power of the Holy Spirit. It tells us what people do when God's spirit and God's word is a part of their story. Listen to a little reading from chapter 2 of that history book. In Acts chapter 2, I'm beginning with verse 37. Now when the people who were together at the Pentecost sermon heard this, they were cut to the heart. They said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one in you in the name of Jesus Christ that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized 
And that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and their goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate with their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That too, friends, is our holy history. You know, our human history as the people of God is a kind of roller coaster ride. We find that wonderful tale of obedience and focusing on God's law as people truly relate to God. And then sadly, as they forget about God, they close down the relationship and things go down. Up and down. Again and again. But the good news is we can choose to be anywhere we want on that ride. So I want us to focus on the high points like the church in Acts. And our history shows just how incredible life can be if we base our life on God and we keep our focus there. The early church was life at the top on the discipleship journey. Listen again to what it looked like. Acts says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They studied and they learned the word of God together. They devoted themselves to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayers. It says that they shared their resources with one another. They were generous with one another and with people around them. They worshiped together. They studied together. They praised God together. And the people around who saw what was going on in the midst of those disciples, saw how they related well to God and to one another, they wanted to be a part of it too. Sadly, the biblical story and our story has always been folks who know that and then at times they fall away. They know how to enjoy the kingdom of God, but they lose sight and they're vulnerable to plunder. That is until they hear the God, call of God to come back home and they're there together. I hope as people who pledge to live by the book, we read Holy History I hope we start reading it as an historical account and find that the story is compelling. Then I hope we reread it more deeply as our family story and then we see that what it says actually applies to each of our lives. Yeah, it helps us to remember to avoid the pitfalls, but more importantly, it reminds us to personally be linked with the greatest story ever told. The story of a Savior who is our Savior and of the saved people who make up the Savior's church. In the pages of a book that this church gives out regularly to people, we find not only a history of God's people, but the story of you and me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Will you join with me as we offer our prayers as God's people this morning? O oh God of stunning surprises and uncanny support, your foolishness is our hope, your lavishness our sustenance, your toughness our encouragement, your gentleness our ease and recreation, your gifts within gifts within gifts are all and joy. Even as we pray, deepen us in the ways of gratitude, of alertness, awareness, imagination, discernment, not to celebrate fantasies, but to see what is profoundly real. Blessings so close and constant, we scarcely notice the name them as such. Now before you, with you, we would so see and thank you. Lead us, creation's architect, into all those places where we will discover your hope, waiting to nourish and restore our famished souls. We offer prayers of joy this morning as there is yet beauty in this strident, scarred world, for we have heard strains of it, seen splashes of it, felt the shock and power, drawl and renewal of it, and been quickened for a time, even jolted to add a jolt and a wit to creating a new, brighter world. We thank you and ask for keener ears, sharper eyes, bolder minds, stronger voices, and ask that you lead us, O shepherd of little children, into all those places where we may have the joy of filling the emptiness of those others with your goodness. May it overflow as we lift to you those of our community we hold in our hearts and lift to you as our church on our weekly prayer list and as well all of those who are called to serve, police, firefighters, emergency responders, and all of those serving in our military as well as their families. We offer these prayers this morning as there is yet love in this violent world, for we have experienced it undeservedly, even risked it in the moments that claim us, and been changed by it little by little. We thank you for it and ask for more larger hearts, wider reach, more daring spirits, more permeable time, more generous intentions, more inclusive communities. And ask that you lead us, spirit of goodness, into all those places where the deeds of kindness and hands overflowing with mercy speak louder than platitudes. May it overflow to those thirsty because of illness of body or mind, those grieving loss or anxious about tomorrow. And gracious Lord, we thank you for more than more than those who are the hollowers, who show us what it means to see and make all things holy. The fidelity of those who rise each day to care for the children or aging loved ones, watch over the sick, and do those thousand thankless tasks that sustain us and our community and our church. For the courage and honesty of poets and prophets whose words, images, and visions take us into your presence. For all of those who say what they mean and mean what they say and build trust among us. For all of those whose gifts and claims make our days like a string of pearls of great price and loosen in us now our tumbling gratitude. For all the constantly compassionate ways you care for us and share with us the mysterious power and insistent will to build, to sing, to heal, to speak, to listen, to strive for peace, to walk the narrow way between justice and mercy toward a full humanity, for us to be faithful, bold, quiet of heart, and to pray as people created for and summoned by joy. There is nothing else we can say except thank you. In God and community, holy and one, lead us into your kingdom as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us and his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us in, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Honey in the rock, water in the stone, men on the ground, no matter where I go, I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need, you've got this honey in the rock. Praying for a miracle, thirsty for the living well, only you can Sweetness, the mercy seat, and I've tasted it. It's so hard to see. Only you can satisfy. It's tiny in the rock. It's tiny in the When we get to know history, we know that there is a story behind every name. And our name is included in that. God is writing holy history in our lives. So learn about the scriptures. See what the stories are. And experience how those stories become our stories as we live in faith. I hope you enjoy living by the book. And I hope we always do that. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each of us.
now and forevermore. Amen. Holds me hostage and won't let 